Not since Naruto Shippuden have I seen such a mixed bag of an anime. To Your Eternity is both simultaneously one of the best and one of the most boring anime I have ever seen. It has characters that are both simultaneously extremely interesting, but then other characters that are extremely bland. And it's so annoying because the first episode of To Your Eternity is so great. In fact, it's probably the best first episode of an anime that I've ever seen. It just makes you want to cry. It's such a great episode that draws you into this anime and it makes you want to keep watching even though the next few episodes aren't as good in my opinion they're not bad or anything but they are definitely a step down from the masterpiece first episode which is totally fine it's you're, you're comparing something that comes afterwards to one of the best first episodes ever in anime it's not all bad the first episode is just great as i've constantly said here it follows a boy and his wall that goes around and you get to see how this boy feels about the situation he's in and he really plays on his emotions and it really pulls on your heartstrings in that way i'm not going to spoil too much about it it's a very good first episode you really feel for this boy and you really get to understand why he acts the way he does and it's such a sad conclusion to that episode it will it will probably bring a lot of you to tears but then after that you then move on to the next few episodes which then follow on a character called march and a character called Perona. I did not like these next two episodes. Again, they weren't bad, and I did like the conclusion to the, those episodes because it was very satisfying, but you have Fushi uh, going around, looking at all these things going on. He's learning. He's becoming more of a more of a human as it, as time goes on. He, he's really starting to grasp what it means to be human, but he's still very animalistic, and he doesn't realise that March kind of takes on his mother's role. He, find, he figures that out for himself, later on but uh he, he's kind of just going around dealing with things at the time and the episodes were just a little too boring for me i couldn't really connect to the characters i didn't like perona i didn't like hyasa the villain of the of these few episodes that she just wasn't that interesting march was good i did like march not as much as the boy from the first episode so it was a real step down and i was really worried with how the show was gonna go because of how uh, the cast is constantly changing so i was really worried from from these next few episodes that i wouldn't really care but fortunately after this they then bring in gugu who i absolutely love gugu was so so good in this episode and these next few episodes he was such a great character and he, he had such a great struggle and i really cared about him a lot and i and i was really i really wanted him to see to do well with fushi because they seem like brothers and they it's interesting because of how fushi's relationship changes like with the boy in the first episode he's more like an owner march is kind of like a mother and then Gu is like a brother so it was interesting to see that dynamic and it was very tragic to see what happens with Gugu how he ends up with his face getting damaged and that and uh I loved seeing his relationship with Reen just improve and develop. It was such a such a great relationship between them two. Every time I see the opening for that one segment where it shows the two of them being happy together, that actually really gets to me. And so I, I feel I really like those few episodes. But then after after the highs of the Google episodes, we then go on to the lowest part of the series for me, which is when we deal with Tonnery's arc. I really did not care about Tonnery at all. All the side characters that are with her as well are just so uninteresting and bland, and you just do not care about them at all. And she's such a step down from not just Gugu and the boy, but even March and Perona are much better characters. There's even a little twist with Perona during these characters, uh, during this segment, which was also really surprising and upsetting but yeah i just did not like this tonnery section and because it's the last few episodes and also i think the longest arc that's given to a character it was very disappointing also um her arc is pretty predictable to spoil it uh, there's a lot of uh, plays with death going on in this series and you kind of know that at some point a companion of Gu uh, a companion of fushi's is not gonna die and you're probably expecting tonnery to survive and to spoiler spoiler she does it's very very predictable and very underwhelming because you think to yourself out of all the characters that could survive why was it her the most boring one but it's fine because fortunately the series does get rescued for me by the final episode the final episode focuses on uh puran and puran's a much better character she has links to both March's storyline and Gugu's, and she has a better link with Fushi than 
uh, Tanori did. So it's great to see her and Fushi's relationship develop over that final episode and to see that they do actually care for each other, which is a great contrast to how they acted towards each other when they first met. I also want to mention the bad guys. There, there are villains in this show and I have mixed feelings towards there being villains in the show because I think just the themes of death are done so well that they didn't necessarily need those villains. Time will tell how good they are uh, but sometimes it just it just feels a little contrived like they needed a villain there for some reason. Sometimes the villains are just there just to kill off one of uh, Fushi's friends because that character needs to die at that point. The villains aren't really that well thought out at the moment but hopefully they will get better. I do think they will, but we'll see. Uh, I just want to speak briefly on the voice acting, because I actually watched To Your Eternity dub, and To Your Eternity had a really good dub. For instance, Fushi is played really well by Jacob Hopkins, who a lot of you will probably recognize as Gumball. See, the problem here is your attitude towards life. Darwin, you be Claire, I'll be life. Okay. Life is giving Claire a hard time. What is she doing about it? Well, let's try that again, but with a more proactive attitude. He, he's really, really good in the role. Um, on top of that, I'd also like to praise both voice actors for Gugu. Uh, Erica Mendes and Bryce Pappenbrook. Uh, Erica Mendes voicing Gugu when he's a child. Bryce Pappenbrook voicing him when he's a teenager. They both uh, bring a lot of pathos to the character and that's why Gugu's my favourite character from the anime so far. The animation's good. The animation's good actually. Uh, I have no issue with the animation. It's pretty good. It's nothing amazing or anything but it is very good. Uh, the music is good. The opening's great. Overall it's a Pretty good anime. I'm I'm really excited for season two. I just couldn't help be disappointed at points because of those characters. They're not all made equal. But I will say that this anime has a great relationship with death and the themes of death. And it treats it very realistically, and you never feel like characters die for no reason. It's it's just very good. A very good anime but there are low points and it's kind of like an anthology in a way and like with anthologies not all the stories are made equal so please bear that in mind with your eternity which is really good but it does have some extremely boring and bland and forgettable moments so i hope you enjoy my rambling on this uh, anime hopefully i'll see you again next time Bye bye